This is how you can make a discord.js documentation search command using your discord.js version 14 bot. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you're interested in getting a pre-coded bot package, you can do so by clicking the links in the description and clicking on the package you would like, and you can view all the server features, and then you can go ahead and purchase it if you would like to. Currently, we have three of these, and we will be making more in the future. If you'd like to get the source code from this video or other videos on my channel, you can purchase a god tier on Discord or a super or god tier on youtube again all of this you can find in the description below so let's go ahead and get into the code all right so over in the code here we can go over to community and i'm going to go ahead and create discord.js docs.js and we can get our slash command builder and we're going to get our embed builder and we can actually do our action row builder as well we can do button builder we can do button style and then we can do equals require and we're going to go ahead and get our discord.js package next we can do const puppeteer equals require and we're going to go ahead and get our puppeteer package just like that now we can do module.exports and we can open this up we're going to get our data which is going to be our new slash command builder we can go ahead and start off by setting a name which is going to be discord.js docs and we can go ahead and set a description and we can say query the discord.js docs and i'm going to go ahead and add a string option we can do option arrow function option to set name this is going to be our query value and we can go ahead and set a description we can go ahead and say the thing to search for and we're going to go ahead and set required to true here then we can add a comma and we're going to do async executes we can go ahead and pass in our interaction and then we can go ahead and open this up so now we're going to start off by doing const and we can get our options and we can set that equal to our interaction then we can do const query equals options that get string and that's going to be our query string and we can also defer a reply so we can do await interaction dot defer reply and we're going to go ahead and set informal to true now we can go ahead and do const browser equals await puppeteer dot launch and we're going to go ahead and get headless now you can either make this true or false uh i'm just going to go to make this true for the tutorial uh now we can go ahead and do const page equals await browser dot new page and we're going to go ahead and do var open url equals and we can go ahead and get this open url here so this is going to be the url that we're opening and it's going to be the discord.js link uh, plus the query that we're going to be getting so just go ahead and copy this down as a variable we're going to be using this twice which is why we're using a variable to make the code a little bit more efficient so we can go ahead and do await page.go to and we can go our open url so now that we've done that we can do var wait and then we can go ahead and set a timeout. We're going to do async and we can open this up. So the timeout is going to be at 30 seconds, which is 30,000 milliseconds. Within this, we can do if and we can do wait is not equal to true. Then we can open this up and we can do await browser.close. And we can go ahead and edit a reply. So we can go ahead and return await interaction to edit reply. And we can say content and we can go ahead and make an alert emoji. And we can go ahead and say, I am having a hard time processing this request. So this is our error handling. Uh, if our wait uh, returns as false, or nothing at all, uh, then we're just gonna go ahead and close the browser and we can just go ahead and say, we're having a hard time processing this. So now we're gonna go ahead and wait for the selector. So we can do await page dot wait for selector. And this is customized by the discord.js docs using element inspect. Uh, so the one I'm using is going to be this selector right here. This is going to be the div that houses all of these event links. So if we go ahead and do inspect element here and we inspect all of this, as you can see, this is going to be the div that houses all of this within it. So that's the one we're going to be waiting for. So now we can actually go ahead and catch an error and we can do error here and we're just going to go ahead and do nothing. And then we can go ahead and do wait equals true because if we're reading this line of the code, that means the wait is over. So we do not have to run any of this error handling. So now we can do const values equals to wait page dot evaluate. And we're gonna run a function and we can open this up. We can do const div equals document dot query selector. And we can go ahead and get that same div no list that we did above. Then we can go ahead and do const list items equals div dot query selector all. And we can go ahead and get li. Next, we can do const values array equals, and we're gonna make an empty array. And we can do list items and then we can do dot for each. 
and we're gonna get li within this parentheses, and we can open this up. In here, we're gonna do const text equals li.intertext, and then we can do const link equals, and we're gonna go ahead and get the discord.js docs website, so that's gonna be https, and we can do forward slash forward slash old.discordjs.dev, and then slash, and then we're gonna go ahead and open this up. Within this, we're gonna do li.query selector, and we can go ahead and get a, and then we can do .get attribute, and that is going to be the href attribute. So so we're basically getting the link and we're also going to be getting the inner text. So now we can go ahead and push these values to an array. So we can do values array and then we can do dot push and I'm going to go ahead and get text and we can get link. So now that we've done all of that uh, and we have our array, we can actually return it. So we can return and we can do values array. So now we can actually go ahead and move on. So we can do await browser dot close. Now we're going to go ahead and do some more error handling. So we're going to do if and we can do values is less than or equal to one. We can go ahead and return wait interaction to edit to reply and I'm gonna go ahead and say contents and we can go ahead and get the caution emoji and we can go ahead and say no documentation found matching query and we can do backslash tick and we're gonna go ahead and get our query so this is basically the final error handling that we're gonna be doing in case none of this works we can just go ahead and give that error message then we can do async function get values and we can go ahead and pass in num as an in input and we can open this up. We're making this function because we're gonna be using it twice and we don't wanna run all of this code twice. So this is basically just making it more efficient. So we can do const output equals values dot slice and we're gonna get zero and then we can go ahead and get num. So basically what our output variable is doing here is it's gonna get the first 10 values because we're gonna be running 10 below. Um, and then for the next, it's gonna go ahead and get 20, 30, depending on the load button that we're gonna be making in just a second. This will all make sense once we actually do that. Then we can do const format equals output.map and we can go ahead and get item arrow function and we can open up this, we can do brackets and we can go ahead and get item.text.replace and we can do ticks, we can do backslash n, we can do a comma, and we're gonna do an empty space just like that. And then we can go ahead and do dot substring, and that is going to be one. Next, we can come out of that and we can do parentheses and we're gonna do our item dot link. And then after that, we can do backslash n. So what we're doing here is we're creating a markdown link using the text and the link. So that's just some fancy formatting for our Discord embed. All right, so now that we've done that, we can go ahead and just return our format variable. Uh, within the function here. So now we're going to go ahead and make our button. So we can do const button equals a new action row builder. And we can go ahead and add some components here. And I'm going to go ahead and get our new button builder. And we're going to go ahead and set a label. This is going to be load more. We can go ahead and set a style. This is going to be button style dot primary. And we're going to go ahead and set a custom ID. For me, I'm going to go ahead and do a DJS load, which is discord.js load. Then we can add a comma. We're going to do new button builder again. We can go ahead and set a label. This is going to be a full list. And we're going to go ahead and set a style. This is going to be our button style dot link. And we're going to go ahead and set our URL, which is going to be our open URL variable that we created at the very start. So now that we have our buttons, we can go ahead and make our embed. But first we're gonna use that function that we just created above. So we can do const final output equals await get values. And we're gonna go ahead and pass in 10 as our number. So that's going to load 10 values from our array of however many values discord.js documentation has. So now we can go ahead and do const embed equals new embed builder. And I'm gonna go ahead and set a color. This is going to be blurple. And we can go ahead and set a title. And this is going to be a discord.js documentation query. And we can go ahead and get our query variable. And we can go ahead and set a description here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do final output dot join. We can just do an empty space. And finally, we can go ahead and set a footer and we can do text and we can say loaded 10 values. So now that we have our embed, we can actually go ahead and send this. So we can do const msg equals await interaction dot edit reply. And we're going to get our embeds, which is going to be our embed. And we're also going to go ahead and get our components, which is going to be our button component. All right, so now we can do const collector equals await msg.create message component collector. So now that we've created the collector that's going to handle the buttons, we can actually go ahead and turn that on. But first, we're going to set our number variable. So we can do var num equals 20 because we're going to load 20 values. So we're going to load the first 10 and then we're going to load 10 more after that. Every time the button is pressed, we can add 10 more values onto that embed. 
So to do this, we're going to do collector.on and we can do collect, we can do async i and we can actually go ahead and open this up here. In here, we're going to go ahead and say if and we can do i.custom id is equal to, we can do djs.load, then we can go ahead and open this up and we're going to say if and we can get num is equal to 40, then we can go ahead and return await i.reply and we can say contents and we can go ahead and say I can't load any more values because 40 is going to reach the maximum embed limit. So we're gonna go ahead and cap that at 40. Then we can go ahead and set infermal to true as well, because that is going to be a separate message not included in the defer reply. So now we can do const new output equals await get values. That's gonna be our get values function. And then we're gonna go ahead and pass in our number variable that we created above. Now we can do embed.setDescription. So we're gonna be editing it. We can do new output.join and we're gonna join it the same way we did above. And we can do embed.setFooter and we're gonna do text and we're gonna be getting our loaded and we can get our num and we can do values. So after we do that, we can actually go ahead and edit this in. So we can do await interaction.edit reply and we can get our embeds, which is going to be our embed. And we're gonna go ahead and get our components again, which is going to be our button components. So now we can go ahead and send a final reply here. So we can do await i.reply. We can say contents and we can say loaded 10 more values. So we're also gonna go ahead and set informal to true on that. Now for the final step in this logic, we're gonna go ahead and do num plus equals and we're gonna do 10. So what's happening here is we have our number variable and every time that button is pressed, it's gonna go ahead and first check to make sure that we have not reached our embed character limit. And then if that checks out, we move on and we go ahead and use our get values function, which gets the specific amount of values that we actually pass in here. So to start, it's gonna go ahead and get 20 values. It's gonna go ahead and edit those new values into the embed, and it's gonna go ahead and update the footer with the current amount of values that it has. It's gonna go ahead and send it, and then it's gonna add 10 to this number. So that means next time the button is pressed, this number has 10 more, so it's going to go ahead and get 10 more values, and every time it's pressed, it's going to get 10 more values until the number reaches 40, and then you won't be able to get any more after that. Now, one thing that I actually forgot to do is account for spaces in the query. So we can just go ahead and do var, and we're going to do query. And so now that we can change the variable, we can come down here right above where we create our browser. We can go ahead and do query.replace, and we can go ahead and do a space. And we're going to go ahead and replace that with a percent sign. So that's going to be the space within that. And actually, we are going to have to do query equals because we actually have to update the variable as well. Now, the other thing we're going to do is because we replaced it up here, we're going to go ahead and replace it for our embed. So we can actually do that right up here. So we can do query equals query. And then we can do dot replace and we can go ahead and do a percent sign this time and then we can do a space so we're basically just going to reverse it for the embed so now that we've made those edits and wrote this entire command we are good to go so we can go in and save the file restart the bot and test this out all right so over in the discord server we can go ahead and start off by just getting something pretty basic i'm going to do message and we can go ahead and send it so it's going to go ahead and think for a couple of seconds and then it's going to give me a response so we can go ahead and test out our load feature so we're going to go ahead and click on load more it's going to go ahead and give us 10 more values we can go ahead and do it again now we have 30 values and if we try to do it one more time it's actually going to stop me because i can't have more than that within the embed if we go ahead and click on the full list it's going to go ahead and open up the documentation giving us the entire list here as well now let's go ahead and try it for something a little bit more advanced so we can do discord.js again and i'm going to go ahead and search for server banner so we can see what we can do with the server banner and we can actually go ahead and send it. I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple of seconds to think. And now we have our server banner. Notice it does have a space here, but in the URL, it's actually going to have a percent sign, which is going to make this URL a valid URL. As you can see here, it works, but it did return all of the values as well. So we can actually go ahead and load more values and we can go ahead and load them again. So that's the max amount of values we can get here. So that's you can make a discord.js documentation command using your discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this, go ahead and join the server in the description below and use our help channels here and we'll be happy to help you out. And you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community. With that, I'll see you guys in the next video.